Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, we're gonna be making another pair of RX tongs. This time we are gonna be focusing on the tong blanks, the number nines um, that you can find. Uh, I'll put a link to RX tongs down in the description down below where you can go find them. They're also known as Crafty Apple, uh, I believe Forge on Etsy. So I'll put a link there. Um, as well. So you could go check out uh, their tongs that they have available. These are pre-cut tongs and pre-twisted tongs. We previously made these tongs before and I've mentioned several parts and talked about several of the different tools that they sent along with them free of charge. This is not a paid sponsorship video. This is just them simply sending me some free stuff and uh, seeing if I would take a look at it. And that's what I'm doing. I'm more than happy to take in some support American made products and businesses here on the channel, um, especially if they're putting out good product. So anyway, so I made these, spoiler alert, I think it was really good, but if you wanna go watch that video, you can go watch that video that was previous to here. I'll leave it linked up somewhere in the cards. It'll either be there or over there somewhere. Um, and you can go check out uh, these regular style tongs. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this video by heating up the nibs of these tongs, these number nines. So without further ado, let's get these hot and then we'll go over to the vise and get started on the very first step of these process, which is twisting the nibs. Okay, just like in the previous video, we are going to take and lock the boss in the vise. And then we are going to use the twisting wrench that they have supplied um, to me. We're gonna use that there and we are going to twist what is going to be counterclockwise or to your left. So we're going to do that on the first pair and get that nice and square and even. Very nice. And then I'll go ahead and brush that off. Nice, square, even, and twisted to the left just like you see it. There you have it. All right, we'll get the next one. Again, as you know, I like to set my stuff down in stages. We're gonna also lock that in the vise, the boss in the vise, and we're gonna twist this one to the left, I believe. Let me make sure, because that'll get flipped that way. Actually, let me reanalyze that. I said to the left both times, but these have some different directions that the boss has already decided to go in. So if we go left and left, when that one gets flipped over, Yes, so both those are going to be the both those are going to be the left. That was throwing me off a little bit. Let me get that hot again. Just threw me off just a little bit there, which it'll probably do you the same too if you're not careful, not paying attention. In the worst case scenario, I can screw these up and I'll just have to go out and buy some more there from RX Tongs. Um, I'm doing this kind of in the moment, so you're kind of watching it live while it happens, sort of deal. <laughs> well, too bad that doesn't work on that. But yeah, so now we'll have to align. I'm going to brush that real quick. Doing these live in the moment, it kind of helps you get to kind of see the problems that you might run into yourself. So there we go, they're both switched to the left. One goes over on top of the other one, just like I knew that they should, okay? But you can see that those clearly don't line up. Those, don't clear, those clearly do not line up, which is a problem. That means we just have to, we're blacksmiths, we can take care of this. All we're gonna do is hammer those back over to adjust them in line. Uh, and we will do that when we hammer out the twist that we've created right there in the shank. So. Let me get these hot. We'll be over at the anvil next. All right, bringing out tong number one. We are going to go to the far side of the anvil. 
And we're gonna hammer that down flat till we end up on our boss. And then we're gonna come to the near side of the anvil. And we're gonna hammer that down flat and until we come to our boss. Back to the near, I'm um, back to the far side, back to the near. And all we're trying to do is clean that up. And then we're gonna go ahead and knock that back straight. Just like that, come back to the near. It's really good to learn how to use your anvil edges to your advantage when doing tong work and projects like this. It will really, really, really help you out. So there you have it, there's one. So we'll set that off to one side and it can cool slightly while we work the other one. Again, far side of the edge of the anvil, far side. Back to the near side, back to the far side, back to the near side, and finish by straightening that out a little bit. And if you can see, I'm not really wailing on this because we're trying to as you can see, I can chuck a tong clear across the shop. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not getting too scratchily there. All right. All we're trying to do is actually form this or bend it. So technically you're just kind of bending this with the hammer. You're not really forging a whole lot. You're forging out the twist and then we are bending it more or less to get it in line. And this is gonna take a little bit more alignment um, in the final stages once we get the boss put together. But, so at this stage, you can see those are almost there. They're almost lined up. We'll need to wait to actually get them put pinned or riveted together before we can do our final adjustments and get those perfectly in line. But until then, the next step in this process, we need to put the divot in each one of these nibs here. So that's what we're gonna do now. Okay. We've got this hot again. Now we're gonna use a nice round punch or ball punch that, like, that they like to call them here. And we're gonna use a hammer and we're gonna go ahead and hammer that little cup or that little depression that you see into these in at this stage. round that off and there's one cup or depression. Now, if you do not have a ball punch, which they're super easy to make, I've got videos on them on the channel. You can go check those out. You can use a ball peen hammer. The only caveat to this is you need to use a soft face hammer to strike this hammer face with. You, these are a hardened tool. You do not want to be hammering two hardened tools together. You don't want to hammer two hardened faces together, uh, you take a chance of one of them splitting off and causing some damage to you or nearby people. So don't do that. This is not hardened on this end, but it's hardened over here. So that way I can use a hardened hammer. Now, I broke my saw face hammer. If for you all out there, they're like, what happened to your saw face hammer, Roy? That's what happened. I broke it, uh, the handle, and I haven't rehandled it yet. So I'm using this instead to answer all the inspiring dying questions. But there we go, we've got our cup put in there. Let's go ahead and pull out the other one and we will do the same. Again, I'm just kind of holding it, bracing it on my leg, getting this aligned. I'm aiming for roughly center. And that'll have that cup in there as well. All right, now I got that in there. Brush it down again. Again, get used to using the angles of your anvil, folks. It really does help learn how to use those edges. 
and they will greatly help support your work. All right, so there we have those. Those are together now. Those hopefully look really good to you. They'll flip over and they're making up a really nice set of farrier tongs. So now we'll let these cool naturally and then we will flip them around and we will work on the reins themselves, just like we did in the other video where we rounded them up. That's what we'll do in this video as well. Okay, just like in the other video, I've got a heat about as long as my anvil is wide, which is about six inches or so. Um, actually, it's about six and a half inches. And that is how I'm going to establish how long to hammer on each tong for regularity. And all I'm doing is just removing the corners. You can take as much time as you want to round this up. If you want it round, I'm just going to leave it kind of octagon like that. If you want it round, make it round. Go from, go from square to octagon to whatever 16 side it is, and then to round. So go ahead and do that if that's what you would like to do. Well, no, this is uh, this is a hexagon, ain't it? And then octagon. I think that's how you pronounce it. So again, nice and straight, looking good. I'll give it a quick little brush. That's all I need for my hands, mainly because I got man's hands, so I don't need to <laughs> smooth them off too much myself. So let's go ahead and set this over here, and we'll do this with the other one as well. Here we go, same process. Just hammering the corner off. To the same juncture. In the words of the man, the myth, the legend, if you want it perfect, make it perfect. Some of you will get that reference. <laughs> Here we go. And for me, it's just all about making sure this is trued up and this is in line. Remember, these are supposed to be fairly rapid, um, rapidly made. You're not, spent to, you're not meant to spend an entire day, four, five, six, nine, 10, 12 hours working on these tongs. That's not the purpose of these tongs. These are so this way you can get back to work. Um, you know, somebody's already done the engineering, the cutting out work for you, and all you have to do is pop them together, half hour, and you're done, you're ready to go. And these without filming would take me about maybe 15 minutes to put together. So again, they're meant to be very rapid, very quick to put together um, and get done. Especially if you buy a whole bunch from them and several of the same kind, you can get all of this work done speediously. So you can do all the rounding of the handles, all the twisting of the jaws, all the you know drill layout work and drilling of the bosses for the rivets and so on and so forth you guys get the drift um, you'd be able to do all that so i'm going to let these cool naturally as mentioned in the other video you want them to cool down naturally so this way you relieve stresses and uh you know they just they just work a little bit better if you do that plus it has the added benefit of not toughening up the steel enough that the drill bits uh, wear out early on you. So I'll let these cool back down and I'll be back with you after I've got this hole drilled and we're ready to rivet them up. Get that slipped through. And now the next ta task is we're gonna use this, also supplied by RX Tongs, 
craft the apple to me is this little rivet header. It just sits on the anvil like so. And so you can back up the dome of that rivet. Showed that in the previous video as well. I'm going to press down with some left hand thumb pressure down on this piece. And then we're gonna strike this to upset this enough that it pins it together so these two halves don't come apart. And we're gonna do that with some nice big heavy blows. Don't go too far with this because we're gonna to need to heat this up and we're gonna to need to direct the direction of that striking to put that rivet back over into the center. So we'll leave this on the anvil and now we'll go ahead and heat up this jaw area. Okay, got this piece nice and hot. We're gonna go ahead and set it down. Again, over the rivet header. And now we're gonna start pushing that rivet back over to where it needs to be. And then I'm gonna round it off. Nice and easy like, just like that. Nice and easy. We'll go ahead and get that out of the way. And now, at this time, I'm gonna work the joint just a little bit, get it over where I think it needs to be, and then this is where I'll start lining up my jaws. Nice and easy like. Those are all nice and lined up. Really not too much to those to get them all lined up and in line. And again, we're doing this at a fairly low heat because all we're trying to do is bend it into place. We're really not trying to get this thing to forge. So get that dressed up. That is all put together nicely. It's okay if it's a little loose right now because that is going to tighten up as it cools. So it's okay if it's a little bit on the looser side at this stage because as the piece cools, they shrink and therefore it'll get together. But there you go, you can see how that looks. Really nice set of tongs. So now we're gonna go ahead and align the reins using another tool that they sent me to use, which is another little handy tool um, to do that, where we can crimp or we can clamp on to the rivet of the joint here and then use that bending fork tool to pull the reins over and give it that offset. So that'll be really handy. So we'll go ahead and do that here in this next heat. Okie doke, pulling this piece out of the fire here. Go ahead, lock it in the vise. Nice and tight. That holds that boss right where we need it to. And then we're just gonna put a little bit of a bend in these to get these lined up using our tongs again. If we can get that to loosen up now appropriately. There we go. Again, get it nice and squeezed here. We'll go ahead and give this a bend here. And then go ahead and give it a bend there. It's a bit too much. We really don't need it that much. So take some of that bend out. These really do make it quite handy to do that. Allow you to get that all lined up nicely. And then take that out and now we brush it. So that we've got our handles all aligned. Got a piece all aligned. Now the only thing left for you to do is to take and set up your jaws to hold whatever size stock that you want. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. So yeah, so that's it. That's basically all there is to it. Really simple. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you dip these in oil if you feel comfortable to do so and it's safe. It allows you to kind of season these tongs right out at the end after you've made all of your adjustments and stuff. That's how I like to do mine anyhow. So that's what I'll be doing for mine. Um, I will go ahead and quench them in oil and work the joint as they cool down and that'll give it a really nice blackened finish. Something like this. So that's basically what I did with these 
and that gives it that really nice dark and blacked finish there um, and makes it look really, really good. So yeah, so that's basically it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to hit that like button and uh, share it around with your friends. Um, thank you so much for watching it. And uh, make sure that you join us on Friday nights for, or on every other Friday night, I should say, as once a month throughout the whole year of 2020, we will be giving away a 66 pound anvil uh, during those live streams. But prerequisite, you got to be there and you got to be subscribed in order to win. So that's it for today. As always, God bless you, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.